there and uh, welcome back to the Sloppy Modeler after our summer hiatus and it is uh, now complete and we are headed into fall at our first uh, really chilly rainy day here in West Michigan uh, October the 12th uh, 2021 coming back to the Viper Mark II uh, it's really exactly where I left it uh, two and a half months ago it hasn't changed it's sat here so we have uh, completed the lights, <clears throat> are all, all done, the wiring is complete, our base gloss finish is on, and uh, the one thing that uh, I did uh, get held up in is I repainted this from the silver that it was uh, into this gray, and now I'm going to go through and do the detail painting on that and then do a few touch-ups. But uh, I definitely am uh, have some work cut out for me to bring this one into shape. It's sat here for quite some time, so I've got to work on uh, all of the pieces of it uh, and bring myself back up to speed exactly where I was at when we left it off. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the channel if you uh, haven't been here before, and if you are a returning uh, viewer, we uh, are definitely pleased to have you back with us. I am uh, really excited about this season. I've got a bunch of kits that I accumulated over the summertime, as we sometimes do. Uh, those have been accumulated and ready to go, so we've got the rest of the Mark II and then the Mark VII. And of course we have the um, Cylon Raider from the, the reimagined Battlestar Galactica that we completed at the end of the spring season. But we'll get this one done here and then we'll go on to um, doing that diorama and then moving on to the next set of challenges. Um, I am uh, working next on, like I said, detailing that up and then the decals and then the finishing touches on, on this particular model. So work with me here, we'll, we'll work through this. Uh, I know this is a quick introduction here and uh, very excited to, uh, to be back at the modeling bench. If you do like what you see during the course of this video, I'd appreciate it if you could hit that like button and uh, if you'd like to subscribe. I am uh, very grateful uh, for the uh, subscriptions that have come through in the last year or so, uh, up to 538 the last I checked. So that is uh, exciting for me as we continue to have the channel grow. Hopefully we can grow it uh, somewhat exponentially here this uh, fall. We've got uh, some really fun kits ahead of us. Uh, some small stuff like uh, the Luna rocket ship. Uh, and I'll, I'll confess I've already cheated somewhat. This is pretty well together. I just simply need to um, add in a few pieces and we will be off and running. But uh, for right now, uh, this is ready to prime and then to paint and uh, that has a little special place that we're going to do some work with it uh, at a later time. However, we still have quite a bit of work to do here on the Viper from the landing gear that you can see here to uh, the Pilot Starbuck to make uh, that uh, come together and, and I'm terrible at painting um, painting figures although it's small and be hidden behind all of this that's okay and then I also need to um, paint the, the cage here uh, or the struts or the supports on the canopy uh, a light ghost gray and I think I'm going to use something like uh, our uh, sky gray here for that color I think that'll look good and uh, we will uh, continue with this so Detail painting on this section here, I'm going to kind of duplicate what I've already done uh, in the tail. I'm going to do that across here with some detail painting quickly. After the detail painting, uh, then it's the decals, and then uh, we'll finish wiring this thing up and get it uh, into the done shelf. All right, Sloppy Modeler, back with you. Happy to be here, and uh, we will see you uh, in a few minutes. Thanks. All right, uh, progress on the Mark II Viper went ahead and put the decals on to the top portion here just the red striping seems to have gone on pretty well the uh, couple of challenges are when you're doing this particular joint here and here uh, I was able to just slice down through that and I'm hoping to find like a red paint to match this striping to um, just dab in a couple of uh, touch-ups on a couple of spots but for the most part I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks and uh, the decals are really nice uh, not sure who uh, again this is Mobius so they had uh, I'm not sure who did the decals it doesn't say but uh, they go on nice they're solid uh, they're not ripping or tearing or any of that problem so uh, very pleased with that 
went ahead and got my detail painting done on the uh, inside there. Also painted this section here uh, into the gray. Uh, and then what happens is the decal goes around the nose piece and then decal actually goes over the front of that. So you don't have to worry about painting that at that point. These do kind of piece together in a couple spots like this one right here. I can see some white through there. We'll see what happens once I get some microsol onto that to see if that's going to make a difference. That's actually probably next. Uh, we'll get the microsol on and then uh, hopefully we can make uh, some progress here. So very pleased with the decal adhesion and uh, how quickly this is going. So we're going to continue with some more decals. And uh, once those are in and done, then we'll do the touch-up paints on uh, some of the red places where we need to. And like I said, we are uh, off to the races. So I'll see you in a minute. Thanks. All right, hey, we are making some progress with the uh, decals. Uh, and you guys have uh, all been through this a bunch of times. But uh, just a real quick uh, refresher on kind of the system I like to use here. First of all, I put my Microsol and my Microset into this extra jar. And I have not spilled a jar of that since I've done that. Uh, it's probably saved me 25 jars over the last two years just because of the, the way that that works. Another thing, uh, <clears throat> just put the uh, decal into the water here, and typically there's enough water on the back of that to make that slide pretty easy. And then uh, using my uh, reverse holding tweezers there, I'm able to bring that up, and then we can put this right into place. And I use a nylon brush, not a, a, a horse hair or other type of hair, to wick the water off rather than a, um, I find that it, it rather than a Q-tip, because I find these are, are softer and they give the water a chance to, to come out from behind it and helps me to actually set it into the contours. So I, I really like that, that process a lot. The decal placement guide uh, is really excellent on this uh, with the Mobius instructions. They're, they're just fantastic. So I'm just working my way down the, the side of this here, 30, um, 36, 35, now 34. We'll see what that looks like. And uh, bringing it up here, it looks like this piece right there. And uh, that's the rescue portion. I will say this, the decals have a pretty heavy carrier film on them. It seems like there's uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, carrier film that I can see coming through just when they're prior to being wet. However, even on my glossy surface here, I'm not seeing it so bad uh, from, a, um, from this perspective, right? So I think I'm going to escape without too much trouble on this. I do, again, like I said, I do have to do find some touch-ups on some of this stuff, but for the most part, these decals have gone on absolutely fantastic. And this is uh, right there, the rescue on the hatch. Again, just taking some of the back of that, and then and I'll move that in the right direction. One thing I'm noticing here right away, you can see in the decals that this is underneath, and I've got that too far forward, but I prefer that. And then the rescue is on this panel line right here, and then the next would be number 32 and 31 uh, on top of the engines right there. So let's take a look at that. Uh, number 32, okay, so um, I think that there's a difference here. So 32 CGI version avionics or the full scale prop propulsion communications and then 31. So looking at the decal, 32 is avionics service panel 
uh, all power uh, power trains to be uh, directed before accessing panel disconnected before accessing panel sorry that text is really really tiny or uh, 31 I'm sorry 32 for communications and I don't see a second Oh, 31 is the rounded one here. So either in front or beside uh, is where they're going to go. I think for clarity, I'm going to put it in the back, the CGI version of the avionics, and then the number 31, leaving this out here, communications. This is the avionics side. And uh, like I said, there's not one for communications. It's just, it, it, I guess there must be, because it looks like there's... Uh, looks like there's another piece, but I don't have that anywhere. So I'm going to use uh, the avionics and I'm going to use it behind it. And then I'm going to use the um, 31, uh, which is the caution. So let's go with 32 here and put it behind that decal. And for placement, that is going to be uh, kind of right above the center mark on that um, detail in the engine bay, or intake bay, or whatever you want to call it. I will give it to Mobius. This really makes these decals really make uh, this model come come to life. I, I'm very impressed with this. Right above this center panel here, and again, that's a piece of photo etch, but uh, brush. boy, that that really looks nice. That text is really tiny, and I, I kind of like that. And then this is the caution, uh, do not stand in front of uh, cannons. Cannon locks to be something to be inserted before accessing for the panel. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting piece there. So we can put that above for reference. That one goes directly above uh, this silver detail that I've got there. I did get one coat of um, I did get one coat of all down on these and it really uh, tells me that the detail has turned out nice from a, uh, having a gloss finish on this out of the gate uh, because normally it would sink into any kind of, of matte finish or anything like that uh, but this has really uh, uh, turned out quite nice. Continuing on, uh, we're not going to do the full-scale prop communications, but rather we're going to do number 30 and then a couple of 29s on the side of that. Actually, I'm going to wait on the 29s until I've got uh, red around that front. But let's go with uh, part number uh, 30, which is the ins insignia. 
And that is uh, just in front and at the top side of that panel line there. Uh, really, it's more of just an eyeball it to make sure you've got it where you want it. Sometimes I'll dry my brush out on my foam pad here, and that seems to work kind of some wonders right there. And I'm going to run it on this reflection line. There's a reflection line that I can see where the break is, and I'm running it right on that as I go down. So that, uh, that seems to be pretty nice. So I'm really, uh, really pleased that uh, that just changes the whole look and feel of the uh, of the ship. So we're going to keep at this, and when we'll be back, we'll have some more decaling done. Thanks. All right, hey, uh, back at you here with the uh, Battlestar Galactica Viper Mark II. Uh, nice little bit of progress made uh, last evening, and uh, still continuing to make some more progress today. Uh, we have the decals uh, have been um, affixed to the uh, top of the model and to the sides. Uh, and I'm very pleased with the way that's turned out. I need to um, I need to get some micro set on that and turn that down. I had a significant uh, gap here, and uh, so I had a little bit of extra red striping and I just went ahead and took some liberty put that in I like the way it looks very pleased with that as a matter of fact so uh, the next step is to turn this over and uh, once we turn this over then get um, you see that that's causing me some grief there I need to get some red on that so yeah turn this over and get the decals put on the bottom so let me go to work there and when we're back, uh, we'll have a charge battery in the Sony, and uh, we should have some more progress on the model. Thanks. Okay, welcome back uh, to the Sloppy Modeler, and more importantly, welcome back... Hey, welcome back to the Sloppy Modeler, and uh, more importantly, welcome back to the Viper Mark II. We have uh, completed all the decals. They are on both uh, top and bottom, although I've got some touch-up work on the bottom there and on the nose, but for the most part, very pleased with everything that turned out with it did. I'm going to put a coat of clear, uh, another coat of clear over this and seal in those decals and that should take care of any carrier film, although there's not much there. Also using um, this uh, trans... Uh, let's see what that is. Ah, using transparent red. Uh, it seems to have the right shade for uh, some of the decal areas here that uh, uh, white might have shown through some of the areas there. And I uh, have to do a little bit more microsol on a couple of things, but for the most part very, very uh, pleased and excited with where we're at. And uh, the next step, again, put a coat of clear, put my gray, and again I'm going to use the Sky Gray XF19 on the canopy uh, itself uh, on the ridges and then I'll be able to detape that and uh, then do um, the landing gear which most of them someone's in but the front landing gear needs to go in there's the rollers on the back landing gear and then here are the painted uh, doors for the landing gear itself once those are in and done that is going to pretty much wrap up uh, other than some touch-ups, I think there's also um, the Warrior itself, Starbuck. And then these pieces here actually fit uh, right here off of the edge. I guess that they're radar, uh, radio domes or something along, along those lines. So from that standpoint, uh, we've made a lot of progress here. And I'm happy to be 
coming to kind of the end of this. There's a few parts here and there that need to go on to this, but for the most part, we are nearing the finish line now with uh, this particular model. So this is not clean. Uh, it's uh, definitely a hodgepodge, but uh, you know what? Uh, for the amount of time I was away from it, and uh, my condition with this kit, I'm, I'm going to be fine with it. So let me go to work on this. When we come back, we'll have this painted and we will have uh, some more of the touch-ups done and maybe a coat of clear over this. So I'll be back with you shortly. Thanks. Okay, continuing work on the Battlestar Galactica Viper Mark II. Got uh, most of the uh, ship done here, just a few more pieces. But one of the things uh, uh, prepping for the diorama is uh, dealing with these wires. It's got uh, this is a set of wires that run to the uh, Andrino board or Arduino board, and this is a set of wires that run to like the engines and some of that stuff. But they're loose, and I wanted to tighten them up. So one of my viewers suggested just putting them in a drill chuck, and then um, just taking a uh, set of forceps here and just giving a, a little clamp there and oh, trying to stretch it a little tight here maybe oh, come on now play nicer than that of course this happens when you're on film Putting that clamp on there, it, it does give you a little bit of help, but then just crank this to the right or the left, your choice, and it's like wine and a rubber band. And I think I'm good with that. And now I've got a couple of manageable wires that I can paint or I can uh, drive down the sides here make them look like uh, that's probably what I'll do is paint them gray then make them look like they're part of the landing gear at that point but that I thought was a clever little trick uh, again just being able to wire tie manage or manage your your wires in some shape or fashion And that's just a little drill chuck there that I use uh, for drilling a lot of small holes. And then when that's out there, it's just another little drill truck that goes into that. That DeWalt's been the most fantastic little piece. It does spin to give you a screwdriver uh, if you want a screwdriver. And it's gyroscopic, so if you turn it to the right slow, to the left slow, then you can change your speed. I think I've got it on max speed at the moment. Uh, and then if you need a little more leverage, spin and lock and then it becomes a piece of So very good on you to walt this like a nine volt. But uh, so that is just uh, doing up the wiring there a little more neatly, nice little trick. And this has been coated with a couple of coats of, of Microsol to get everything to lay down. And now I'm ready for uh, my XF20, I'm going to clear this, um, or X22 rather. I'll give another coat of clear over the whole thing. I've also done a rudimentary job on Starbuck, utilizing uh, just a quick uh, shot from the web. Uh, dark green on her flight suit, uh, some black areas, some browns, and uh, I took the liberty of doing a chrome helmet visor. Uh, it looks like it's smoke in the regular visor, but I didn't uh, know how to do that. And then a couple of brown patches on the back to kind of represent, um, you know, some leather back there. So I just did that with some uh, just earth over uh, dark green. I think that turned out okay I, for a figure I'm not uh, particular fond of over there. I also have uh, the canopy is coated with a, its coat of gray. Like I said, this is ready now for a coat of um, our X22 
uh, 22 clear and once that's done we'll do the final landing gear and we will do just a few more of these parts and we are off to the races so uh, finish line is definitely in sight on this uh, when we come back we'll have a, a fresh coat of clear on this and then we'll be putting on the final greeblies here to uh, to finish this particular ship up not particularly pleased with uh, most of this and it, it comes from picking it up three or four months after you've done it um, but it's one of those where I'm just I'm ready to be done with this particular model and move on to the next one. I've got a bunch of models in the kit, or a bunch of kits in the stash that I'm excited about getting to. So uh, that's kind of the next step on some of this stuff uh, after we do the Mark 7. Mark 2 is just about put to bed, and then we will come back. Thanks. All right, hey, uh, welcome back to the uh, Viper Mark II. And uh, we have completed uh, adding a few of the final details uh, that I wanted to put on. Primarily the landing gear has all been glued up and uh, a couple of other final pieces, touches. These um, antennae here uh, that you see on the outsides have been uh, glued in. And then the last bit of painting, uh, detail painting I did was to add the uh, these red uh, balustrades, if you will, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but uh, adding those red uh, points to the other, uh, to each corner here. So uh, I will say this: I used the, um, I used, of course, my uh, semi-gloss clear lacquer from Model Master, and I'm hoarding this as much as possible. So we had put a high gloss white. Uh, and then high gloss clear over this and it was showing every irregularity and bump and and uh, I was really not pleased with what was what I was seeing and then uh, I went ahead and added that um, that uh, uh, semi gloss clear as a result I am really uh, pleased with the finish that arrived so there's just enough of that uh, just enough of that gloss peeking through that uh, it gives me the kind of the look I was I was I was hoping for, but then uh, the semi gloss really took care of a lot of the evils that were out there. Uh, some of the finishes that you couldn't, uh, uh, some of the bumps and and scrapes uh, kind of went away. So um, have our headlights at the front, and uh, I think those turned out really nice. The landing lights at the front. Um, I will say this: this delicate front end. Uh, if I were to do that again, I would just simply tape that off and paint it. The decal does work, but it uh, it's very um, cumbersome and crinkly. And same with these uh, stripes across the top here. Uh, same thing. Very, very challenging at that point. We do have uh, our interior is lit. Uh, and I think that that turned out really nice, if you uh, can see inside of there. Uh, and nice contrast to uh, Starbucks green. Uh, flight suit and I think that that uh, uh, has turned out really nice. I'm going to leave this as removable. You can still see uh, in there all of the different uh, uh, lighting uh, components. I will say that um, I really really like oh, looks like we crossed our wires here. I do really really like um, this headlight right here, this lamp right here and the heads up display. If you remember from the earlier video, that was a particular challenge, and uh, uh, all in all, I, I'd say that that turned out really, really nice. Go ahead and put the canopy on, and I'll, I'll actually, you know, I think I, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'll just use some canopy glue to tack that down. The guns are firing. Uh, you can see them right there, maybe. Uh, the guns fire. We've got our triple blank here at the top, and then on each side, we've got our green nav and our red nav uh, firing away there. So that, uh, uh, very excited about that. Some bumps and bruises along the way, especially uh, having this sit for probably three months before I did anything with it. Uh, I am pretty pleased with uh, the turnout. Uh, and again, this is gonna be put away now. Uh, this is gonna be put away for uh, a bit as we go through the Viper Mark 7. 
and we'll introduce that in the next video. But uh, so we're going to put that away, and essentially what we've got here is um, just this is ready to have uh, its wiring put into the into the diorama base, and we'll get to that uh, after we've got the Viper Mark Seven done, and we'll combine the Viper Mark II, uh, which is this one, the Viper Mark Seven and the uh, uh, Cylon Raider, all from the reimagined uh, Battlestar Galactica. Challenging kit to fit together, there's a, uh, uh, this thing leaks light like a, um, like a sieve, quite honestly, and I, I'm not gonna go to the effort of, of re redoing all of that, but uh, it is uh, um, still very, very cool. Definitely like uh, the lighting in the back for the engines. Uh, that is a nice effect with the flickering blue uh, lamps in there and then using the um, using the pieces from uh, the paragraphics kit uh, to give me my translucent um, background there. I did have to add I did have to add a piece of plastic uh, between that um, a piece of plastic between the light and the translucent uh, finish and then the external there. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, that, that, that okay, but that's, that's kind of where we're at. All right, this is gonna wrap up the Viper Mark II. I really appreciate you coming along with me on this journey. Uh, I know it's been quite some time, and it's like somebody who writes a trilogy, but only publishes two of the three books. Uh, the second book is done now, and we are gonna move very quickly on to the third book, and uh, that will be the Viper Mark VII. So if you uh, do like what you see, hit that like button. We appreciate it. And if you would like to subscribe, we are growing the channel. I think I'm over 540 subscribers now, which is kind of amazing to me. Uh, but we appreciate your support uh, greatly. All right. We will call it a wrap. Thank you.